Do you want your Magic Kingdom trip to be okay, or do you want to make it the very best? If you answered the best, which I'm assuming you did, then you've clicked on the right video. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So Magic Kingdom is the most popular theme park in Disney World, and for good reason. Not only is it the OG of the four, but it's got lots of different rides and shows and restaurants for you to fall head over heels for. Or you can develop an unhealthy obsession with the people mover, because that is what we do. But with a park so jam-packed with attractions and guests, you're gonna need a solid game plan to get everything done that you wanna get done. Which is why we're coming at you with all our best Magic Kingdom tips that'll make your visit way easier easier and better than you could have hoped for. All right, first tip we want to share is how to make getting dining reservations easier in this very popular park. So this trick could be the difference between getting that reservation you really, really want or missing out on it entirely. When it comes to snagging reservations for coveted Magic Kingdom restaurants like Cinderella's Royal Table and Be Our Guest Restaurant, speed is key. ADRs, Advanced Dining Reservations, open 60 days before your trip, starting at 6 a.m. Eastern. For those hot ticket restaurants, you're gonna wanna be up and around by then since those reservations will go fast. It might even benefit you to be all logged in and ready to go by 5.30 Eastern just in case Disney decides to drop those ADRs early. Sometimes they do. You're going to want to save yourself as much time as possible once those reservations are released on the Disney World website or the My Disney Experience app, wherever you're making your reservations, so here's what you do. If you already have a game plan and know exactly what restaurant you're wanting to book, search for that specific restaurant name online or on the app instead of just clicking check dining availability for the date you're looking for. That way, you don't have to sift through all the other dining reservations that'll appear when you're only trying to find one specific restaurant anyway. It may only save you a couple of seconds, but a couple of seconds could still be the difference between getting the reservation you want and not getting it. You can also call to book reservations, but that phone line doesn't open until 7 a.m. Eastern, so your best bet is trying to book online first, then calling is your plan B. Next tip for Magic Kingdom, beware of the transportation and ticket center. If you pay for a ride share or you decide to drive to Magic Kingdom via your own car, you're still gonna have quite a journey to make it to the park's front gates. And that's because you'll have to park or you'll be dropped off at the transportation and ticket center, the TTC first. From here, you'll either have to take a monorail or ferry boat to get to the Magic Kingdom entrance. Only Disney World Resort buses or the minivans, those are Disney's own ride share service you can book through the Lyft app, will be able to drop you off or pick you up directly from the front gate of the park. So if you're not using either of those services, then make sure to schedule in some extra travel time into your itinerary. Also note that sometimes they do have buses running from the Transportation and Ticket Center over to the Magic Kingdom. If they do have buses, that's probably going to be your fastest option. Number three, don't miss the morning show. Okay, what better way to kick off your Magic Kingdom day than with a celebration alongside your favorite Disney characters? Let the Magic Begin features a Mickey-led musical number in front of Cinderella Castle. You'll only be able to catch this show once per day, five minutes before the park officially opens, which is most often 9 a.m., but occasionally 8, so be sure to know the day's park hours before you go. You are allowed to be on Main Street USA prior to the official opening time of the park, so use that opportunity to head towards Cinderella Castle and get a good spot for the start of the day celebration. This next Magic Kingdom trick isn't exactly going to make your day easier, but it will make your day more unique. Did you know that you can get your hair cut on Main Street USA over at the Harmony Barbershop? They do child's haircuts, first haircuts, adult haircuts, and beard trims. Bizarre? Sure. But also, how many other people can say they had their hair cut inside the most magical place on earth? While you'll sometimes find walk-up availability for this, you can guarantee your seat in the barber's chair by booking an advance reservation on the Disney World website. Our next tip is how to get the best views for those fireworks shows. All right, it's the end of the day and you're desperate to find a good spot to see the epic happily ever after fireworks spectacular that everybody's been telling you you have to see. So where do you need to station yourself for the best view? Well, if you want to be right in the heart of things, then you and your group can chill right in front of the castle for 30 to 45 minutes prior to showtime. Just be ready to make some close neighbors here. This will give you some of the best views of the projections directly on the castle, but you might be craning your neck to see the fireworks. For better fireworks views and, again, a clear view of the castle projections, step back a few paces and place yourself near the partner's statue of Walt and Mickey. This area will also get super crowded, but you should still be able to see the show all right. However, if you want to see the projections, 
that'll also be happening down Main Street, USA, then plan to stake out a spot right there in the middle of the street while avoiding those all too dangerous ankle twisting trolley tracks, of course. Find your spot on Main Street about 45 minutes prior to showtime, or even less if you want to be further back, closer to the train station, because the crowds will be less thick back there. Just bear in mind that this provides the furthest view of the on-castle projections, but you will be closer to the exit, meaning you can make a beeline out of the park before the wave of people does. Or if you don't mind paying for a preferred fireworks view, then you might find terrific value in booking a happily ever after dessert party, which pairs sweets with the best viewing areas all in one fell swoop. You can book a happily ever after dessert party before your trip on the Disney World website. Now this tip goes for all the parks. Don't be afraid to go against the crowd. Okay, I'm here to tell you it's all right to swim upstream and against the current. Okay, let me put that in human talk and not salmon talk. If you decide to arrive at Magic Kingdom for Rope Drop, AKA park opening, don't feel like you have to hit up those hot e-ticket attractions right off the bat, like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train or Space Mountain, cause that's where everyone else is going. Unless you arrived before Rope Drop, like an hour or so early, the lines for these rides are still gonna be lengthy because that's where all these rope droppers are planning to go. This isn't a terrible idea, but if you're looking to ride as many rides as possible before the crowds fill in, consider using that rope drop time to hit up some other rides around the park before those crowds distribute and make all the wait times increase. Like the Adventureland rides, Jungle Cruise, Pirates of the Caribbean, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and Haunted Mansion, which are located in neighboring lands, though a little far away from each other. Or if you're traveling with younger kids, you can get a head start on the Fantasyland circuit with Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Barnstormer, and Peter Pan's Flight. I'm not saying skip out on major rides. There's a reason why they accumulate large lines. They're a ton of fun, but you can always hit up those signature attractions toward the end of the day instead, since wait times do tend to drop just before park closing time. Remember, Disney will still let you into the queues for rides up until the park closes, so even if you jump in the queue 10 minutes before the end of the day, you'll get to ride. Cast members will make sure to get everyone through the queue before they close down the ride, so you're not only gonna have a shorter line to wait in, but you'll also get some extra time in the park too. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, use mobile checkout. Okay, mobile ordering isn't just for food, y'all, it's for shopping too. At select Magic Kingdom shops like Emporium, Star Traders, and Tomorrowland Launch Depot, you can use the mobile checkout feature on your My Disney Experience app to skip the physical checkout line entirely. You can check out anytime you want, wherever you want, in the store. Such a major time saver and easy too. After you tap on the mobile checkout button, the My Disney Experience app will lead you to your virtual shopping bag. Press scan an item to scan the barcode of the merchandise you're wanting to buy. That item will be added to your account immediately. Next, you'll have the option of adding more to your virtual shopping cart or proceeding to checkout. As long as you have all your card info already added to your app, you should be able to check out almost instantly. After you out, a QR code will pop up on your phone screen and you can show that to a cast member at the store's exit to prove you've purchased your item or items on the app. Now, before you go to Magic Kingdom, you're definitely gonna wanna learn about those virtual queues. Per the release of this video, the newest Magic Kingdom coaster, Tron Light Cycle Run, is still using a virtual queue system, meaning you won't be able to get in a standby line for this one if you're planning a trip for the near future. You'll grab those boarding groups for the ride's virtual queues on the My Disney Experience app, but here's how you're gonna pull it off. First, confirm your party. Beginning at 6 a.m., you can tap into the virtual queue and set your party, meaning the people you're gonna ride with, so that you have fewer steps when boarding groups are available at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. On the app under Join Virtual Queue, you'll find a button that says Confirm Your Party. Once you hit that button, the app will find the people who are linked to your account. You'll select each person you want to add to your party and then, yep, confirm your party. Next, join the queue. You can attempt to join the virtual queue through the app at exactly 7 a.m. Eastern by selecting the Join Virtual Queue button on the home screen of the app. Remember, you can register for the 7 a.m. virtual queue opening from anywhere, even your hotel bed. You do not have to be inside the park, but if you try for the 1 p.m. drop instead, you will have to be inside the park. The app will notify you immediately if you have successfully booked a space in the virtual queue by providing you with an assigned boarding group number. At any time throughout the day, you can monitor which groups are currently boarding within the app, or you can look on information boards posted throughout the park. Better yet, you can also enable push notifications from the app that'll alert you when your boarding group is called. Once you're called, you only have an hour to get back to rides, so make sure you pay attention. 
Another way to make your Magic Kingdom day even better is considering paying to skip the lines. Whether you love it or hate it, you still need to know about it. Disney Genie Plus is a premium online planning tool that you can find on the My Disney Experience app. This tool is going to grant you access to Lightning Lanes, which are basically the updated version of Disney World's former FastPass system. Rest in peace. Genie Plus costs between $15 and $35 per day per person and allows you to select one ride at a time for a specific time frame where you can skip the standby line entirely. You can make multiple selections throughout the day, but you'll only be able to make another selection once your previous Lightning Lane ride has been used, or 120 minutes have passed. Some rides aren't available for the standard Disney Genie Plus feature, such as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Tron Light Cycle Run. Instead, you'll have to pay a separate fee to receive individual Lightning Lane benefits for those hot ticket attractions. We've got a YouTube video out now going really in-depth about how to get the most out of your Genie Plus purchase while you're in Magic Kingdom, so make sure to check that video out when you can hear all our trade secrets. One more thing about Genie Plus that I got to tell you about before we move on here. Not too long ago, Disney switched things up and made their Genie Plus pricing park specific, meaning the cost of this line skipping service will vary both by date and by which park you're going to. More often than not, Magic Kingdom does have the highest Genie Plus prices of the four parks since it tends to be the busiest and it has the most rides. So when you're budgeting for this service, make sure to save back more for it instead of less. Even if Genie Plus isn't as expensive as you thought it'd be on the day of your visit, it's better to highball and have some safety net cash than lowball and have to pay out of pocket more than you were expecting. Genie Plus goes on sale daily starting at midnight, but Lightning Lane selections don't go live until 7 a.m., so be sure to set those alarms. All right, are you ready to try a unique snack? Yes, Magic Kingdom is home to those staple Disney World treats like the Mickey Premium Bar, the Mickey Pretzel, and that refillable popcorn. But they've also got tons of snacks that you're not going to find anywhere else on property. Here are a few unique options you may want to try if you're feeling adventurous. The Spring Roll Cart outside Adventureland has specialty Spring Roll flavors that rotate out. Currently, you'll be able to find the classic cheeseburger flavor that we see here often, as well as a brand new chicken ham and cheese flavor that comes with a honey mustard dipping sauce, so basically a chicken cordon bleu. Over in Fantasyland, Friars Nook speaks to my love of mac and cheese and bacon and tots by topping both its hot dogs and tater tots with bacon, mac and cheese deliciousness, and there's tots too. And be sure to hit up the Main Street Confectionery for the Blondie Pie. This this treat is made with butterscotch flavored chips, caramel bits, and topped with Twix minis. Now here's a Magic Kingdom trick we created just for you. If you scan the QR code that you see on the screen right now, you'll be able to access our digital Magic Kingdom Ultimate Checklist. Or if you've got a computer handy and a browser open, you can also head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash MKChecklist just as quickly. Make sure to drop us your name and email. We'll send this full checklist to your inbox within seconds. This will also automatically sign you up for our DFB newsletter, totally free, that you can unsubscribe from at any time. But don't worry, the checklist is yours to keep. Now, one thing that some people are really concerned about with the new Tron coaster is whether they're going to fit into it because it's kind of a strange locking mechanism behind your legs. Now, Tron is most known for being the only Disney World coaster where you ride it like you would a bike. And while that makes this coaster feel more like you're actually riding a light cycle, it can be a pain depending on the guest. That's why Magic Kingdom offers a tester seat outside of the attraction so you can gauge your comfort level before you ride. If you decide it's not a great fit, you can request the adaptive seating option by speaking to a cast member so you can still ride and enter the grid. That adaptive seating option is at the back of some of the trains, and instead of sitting on a light cycle, you'll sit upright in a seat. All right, we're back to a food tip here, and it's knowing and using walk-up wait lists early. There may come a time during your trip where you didn't make a table service reservation, but you really wish you had, and now you're kicking yourself for it. That's when the walk-up wait lists come in handy. Walk-up wait lists are available through the My Disney Experience app, and they allow guests to view and snag reservations at table service restaurants that still have available seating for you if you're currently in the park. But here's where our tip comes in. We know that the phrase walk-up implies right now, but it's quite possible that the restaurant may not actually have that walk-up availability until an hour or two out. So if you haven't lined up an advanced dining reservation, but suddenly a relaxing sit down meal seems like a good idea, we recommend checking out that walk up wait list availability early, like when you get in line for your first ride, to aim for the most convenient time possible. The earlier you look for last minute tables, the better your chance at getting one on the day of your visit. 
And since we're on the subject of pre-planning your Magic Kingdom meals early on in the day, you can do the same thing for your quick service meals too, your fast food meals. During some of Magic Kingdom's busiest seasons, we see quick service or fast food restaurants get bogged down with major lines during those peak dining times. So even if you're wanting to mobile order off your My Disney Experience app to skip the physical lines entirely, you might still find yourself having to wait a while for your order to start being prepared if all the immediate arrival time slots have already been taken up. So here's the handy dandy tip for you. Open up mobile order a couple of hours before you actually want to eat and plan ahead and schedule your pickup time before everyone else does. That way you'll be sitting down with your favorite meal exactly when you want to be. It's also not a bad idea to plan your mobile orders around non-peak dining times for a late lunch or early dinner. In the meantime, you can always order some park snacks to munch on to tide you over or you can pack some munchies from home in your park bag too. Now, if dining inside the Cinderella Castle or the Crystal Palace for that matter wasn't enough of a royal treatment for you, you can feel even more special depending on what time you book a reservation at either one of these locations. If you snag a breakfast reservation for the first time slot of the day, then you'll get the chance to enter the park before everyone else. This will give you the opportunity to see that big castle reveal down Main Street USA when the streets are practically empty. It can also give you the ability to snap some fantastic pictures without any other guests photobombing your view. And the best part is by the time the park opens, you'll be fed and you'll already be inside the park so you won't be streaming in with thousands of other people and you can get to your first ride the fastest. Our next tip to make your Magic Kingdom day better, escape. Okay, let me explain. Since Magic Kingdom is the most popular park, it also tends to be the most crowded, and those massive crowds can get real overwhelming, even for people who usually don't mind sharing their vacation with everyone else. Magic Kingdom crowds tend to be their worst during the early afternoon, so if you need to escape from all the people, here are a few places you can turn to nearby. Carousel of Progress is a rotating show, one of a kind, but the wait times are short, the building is air-conditioned, and the whole experience takes around 20 minutes, so that means you'll get a good chunk of time out of the sun, off your feet, and away from the swarm of guests. Plus, it's awesome. Similar things can be said of Hall of Presidents, Country Bear Jamboree. Just look for the indoor shows and rest for a spell while still getting a good bout of that Magic Kingdom experience. Also, there are a couple of spots in Magic Kingdom that are more off the beaten path, but they're not entirely hidden. These are spots that could have some people in them, but when they don't, they're great for you to take a breather. One of our favorite overlooked areas is over on Center Street. This street is just off Main Street USA, and it's basically like a little side street that doesn't lead anywhere. There are some tables and chairs over here that you can relax at if they're available. And if Main Street is feeling super crowded, this is a nice spot to hang out and people watch or just relax for a while until you're ready to brave the crowds again. You can find it right between Crystal Arts and Uptown Jewelers on the right side of the street if you're walking into the park. Another place that's kind of tucked away, out of sight, out of mind, is the gazebo in Liberty Square. You'll find it right before you get to Yield Christmas Shop if you're entering the land from the hub. During events like Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, this is usually where characters like Santa Claus will meet and greet, so this tip only applies during normal park hours if a character meet and greet isn't happening there. I think right now Merida is meeting there from time to time. And don't forget the tent near Pete's Silly Sideshow. Over in Storybook Circus, tucked away by Pete's Silly Sideshow, there is a spacious yellow tent specifically designed for you to the crowds and even charge your phone for a bit thanks to the wall outlets. It's nothing fancy, but it could be the perfect hideaway when the parks start to get too hectic. Now, want to see the Festival of Fantasy Parade with a better chance at a great view? Consider going during the second showing. Normally, Festival of Fantasy performs twice a day, once at 12 p.m., once at 3 p.m. Again, this isn't foolproof, but more often than not, we find that many guests will opt for the noon show instead of the 3 p.m. one. So if you decide to go against the crowd, plan to hit up Festival of Fantasy later for a less people-y situation, and use that 12 p.m. show time to hit up more rides while the parade observers aren't populating the lines. Warning, you want to check on your weather app before attempting this trick, because Orlando experiences those afternoon thunderstorms, and if severe enough, the parade will be canceled, making 12 p.m. still your best bet for seeing it. Now here's another solid parade tip for you. Whether you decide to go to the first or second Festival of Fantasy showing, the crowds are usually way more hectic down Main Street USA than they will be over in Frontierland. So try to stake out a spot near Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, just outside the Country Bears Jamboree, or somewhere near the Westward Ho Kiosk. Just make sure you're not blocking any entrances or foot traffic with wherever you decide to nest. 
Next tip is to start a walking regimen before you go to Disney World. So the DFB team and I are in Magic Kingdom a lot. So when I say that Magic Kingdom is exhausting, I mean it. You can get enough sleep, get enough food, have enough mini breaks throughout the day, and your feet might still hate you by the end of the night. Let me hit you with some numbers real quick, just so you know why your feet might cry. Let's say you stay in Magic Kingdom from rope drop to park close. If that's the case, then you're probably gonna be taking around 20,000 to 25,000 steps per day. Sometimes our park reporters even clock in with 30,000 steps. If you're not used to that kind of physical activity, Magic Kingdom or any of the parks could be difficult, especially in the summer when it's just overwhelmingly hot and humid. So start practicing ahead of time. I'm about to take my mom to Disney World for a couple of days. She's 80 years old and I'm telling her already, mom, you got to start walking around the block at least once a day. Start small and make sure to get in those recommended 10,000 steps daily if you can. Take walks on your lunch break, stroll on your gym's treadmill, use the stairs when you can, make the rounds at your local mall. However you can get in those daily steps, get them in. That way your body will be more prepared for the physical exertion that's going to happen when that Disney trip commences. All right, so think of this as a part two of the point I just talked about, because I'm not kidding your friends, Magic Kingdom will wipe you out. Since this park is filled with so many rides and attractions and things to see and eat, it may not be a bad idea to plan for two days at this park instead of just one. That way, you're gonna be able to take as many breaks as you need to and not worry about rushing to get everything done in one day. Not to mention, if you're traveling with younger kids, then a half park day will be easier for them to take on than a full 20,000 plus step day. Then, instead of wearing yourselves out silly, you can head back to the hotel for naps and a quick dip in the resort pool before dinner. The good thing about going to Magic Kingdom with younger kids is that most of the rides here are for all ages, but a few of them like Tron and Space Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain, they still have a height requirement. So if you're going to Disney World with a kid who's not tall enough to ride yet, or a kid who is tall enough but would rather just skip the thrills altogether, then someone's always gonna have to be that designated person who skips out on the big kid rides and stays behind to watch the younger party members. However, Disney has a rider switch service that'll make sure everyone who wants to ride will be able to ride, even if one person has to stay behind initially. To use Rider Swap, find a cast member at the entrance of the ride. Let them know you're using Rider Swap so that they can scan your magic band or park ticket. Then the riding will commence as usual. The first group of your party will wait in the normal queue while the others wait behind with the kids. After the first part of your travel party rides and returns, they'll play a game of tag team. Now it's their turn to watch the kids while the second part of the group goes and rides. Only this time, the second members will get their band or card scanned by the cast member and get to use the lightning lane to shorten their wait time. Bam, time saved. And everyone who can and wants to ride now gets to ride. Win-win. All right, we don't talk about park pass reservations as often as we used to because A, they're not as difficult to snag as they used to be, and B, they're going away for most guests starting on January 9th, 2024. That being said, they are still required for now, and if you don't make a park pass reservation for your 2023 trip, then you won't be able to enter Magic Kingdom, even if you have a valid theme park ticket. The only time you won't need to make a park pass reservation is if you're just planning on spending one day only in Magic Kingdom and skipping out on the other parks for now. One day tickets will automatically make those reservations for you to secure your spot in the park. One of the most frightening moments in Disney World occurs right after the Magic Kingdom fireworks end and you find yourself carried along in a veritable sea of humanity all trying to exit the park at the same time. It's awful. But what if I told you we could make that experience much less terrifying? Well, instead of rushing into the mass park exodus, consider just grabbing some food instead. Some Magic Kingdom restaurants have mobile order available past the park's closing time, like Casey's Corner and Main Street Confectionery. So with this hack, you can merrily snack on a confectionery caramel apple or Casey's corn dog nuggets and take a break in the hub grass as the rest of the crowds disperse behind you. Just make sure you book that mobile order time slot before the park closes. Okay, we got a brand new tip for you here. Tron Light Cycle Run is the first Disney World attraction to require the use of lockers. But don't worry, it's not hard to figure out and they won't cost you a cent extra to use. You can unlock a locker with a magic band or a physical park ticket, or if need be, a cast member can give you a temporary Tron Locker card, which you'll return after you retrieve your stuff post-ride. 
There is a small compartment on the ride vehicle that you can use to store items like phones and glasses and wallets, but anything larger than that has to be stored in the lockers. If you accidentally lock your card in your locker, which yes, has happened to us, just track down a nearby cast member in the queue and they can reopen your locker for you with their tablets. And what happens if you forget your locker number? No worries there either. Just scan your ticket or magic band on one of the Tron locker screens and it'll tell you which locker is yours. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the weather. This is my big bad reminder to download a reliable weather app before your Magic Kingdom visit, so you'll always be in the know when it comes to Orlando's storms. Usually, you'll catch me checking out AccuWeather, which I find to be pretty accurate when it comes to predicting minute-by-minute weather conditions. But apps like Windy and My Radar are also pretty good at showing the current radar and predicting when a storm will come and go. Why do you need to know this? Well, there's a lot of outdoor rides in Magic Kingdom. Just yesterday, I think like 10 to 12 rides were closed at the same time because of lightning in the area. So if you happen to be wanting to go on an outdoor ride, don't get in line and wait forever just for it to close right when you get up to the front. Make sure you know when those storms are rolling in and choose the indoor rides for that time. Also, don't forget about the Main Street entertainment. Guests are quick to make their way out of Main Street USA and onto other parts of the park where the rides are. But just because Main Street USA doesn't have any coasters doesn't mean you're not gonna have a good time here too. The Casey's Corner Pianist is a Main Street USA icon and you can catch their show several times throughout the day. And since we're talking about park icons here, let's not overlook that colorful quartet, the Dapper Dance, who perform a cappella musical numbers from the mornings until the afternoon. And around 5 p.m. daily, you can see the flag retreat ceremony, which I get is not necessarily entertainment, but it's incredibly poignant. An active duty military member or veteran is selected from among the park's daily guests to lower the flag and carry it in a processional down Main Street, USA. Now, everybody loves when we talk about this over on our social media channels, and I hope you'll like it too. Did you know you could get pixie dusted in Disney World for free? So you can make the whole place shimmer just by asking for free pixie dust in Magic Kingdom. Pixie dusting is where a cast member asks you to close your eyes, make a wish, and then they use a magic wand to sprinkle you with pixie dust while wishing that all your dreams come true. Very Disney of them. You can get a complimentary pixie dusting at two different locations in Fantasyland. The first is at Sir Mickey's Gift Shop, and the second and is at Bonjour Village Gifts. And no, this isn't just for the kids. Grown-ups can ask for their biggest, bestest dreams to come true too. Just make sure you've got plenty of shampoo because some of that pixie dust takes several washings to come out. <laughs> okay, all aboard the Snail Mail Express. If you're wanting to send someone back home a postcard or maybe even send yourself a letter to remind future you of how much fun your past self had now that you're stuck back at work, then you can use Magic Kingdom's very own mailbox to do so. You'll find this mailbox over on Main Street USA, right outside the fire station and toward the entrance of the park. Of course, your envelopes will need to have stamps and addresses, but you can bring your own stamps from home. And you can also purchase stamps in Magic Kingdom over at the Main Street Chamber of Commerce or at the newsstand, both of which reside along Main Street USA, so not too terribly far away. What you add to your park bag is more vital to your Magic Kingdom day than you might think. So here are some of the must-pack park essentials that you'll need to have in your backpack or your fanny pack or your purse or whatever before you step foot inside the park. First, a mobile charger. This will make sure your phone doesn't die in the middle of your park day, leaving you my Disney experience less. A portable charger will definitely come in handy. We use ours all the time. Two, sunscreen. No burnt noses or shoulders here. Applying sunscreen is not a one and done ordeal. You need to reapply this stuff several times throughout the day to make sure you're keeping your skin safe. Next, a refillable water bottle. Magic Kingdom has a few water stations where you'll be able to fill up on nice, cool H2O and keep yourself hydrated. Also, extra socks, because if that rain comes down, wearing soggy socks can be miserable, so pack an extra pair to change into, and maybe even a couple of those blister band-aids, right? And Ziploc baggies. Where are you gonna store your other socks while they're all gross and wet? Well, put them in a Ziploc baggie so they don't get the rest of your stuff wet. Ziploc baggies are also great for storing melty sweets like lollipops and chocolate-covered rice crisps be treats that you want to save and munch on again later. Now you can't put a bathroom break on pause. Finding where the bathrooms are in Magic Kingdom ahead of time can prevent you from backtracking and completely missing out on one that was way closer to where you already were. Fun fact, you can use a filter in the My Disney Experience app to find the closest bathrooms. Just go to the map, tap on the down arrow at the top of the screen, and choose the restroom icon for a full list of porcelain throne pit stops. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. You don't have to pay for pricey water bottles in Magic Kingdom, even if you don't bring a refillable one from home. Free water cups are available at several quick service locations and kiosks around the park. Just keep in mind that the popcorn carts, aside from the one in the hub area, do not have free ice water available and only sell it bottled. However, locations like Joffrey's and the Main Street Bakery, Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, Westward Ho, Sunshine Tree Terrace, and lots of other quick service locations will make sure to keep you nice and hydrated at no extra cost. Disney does not want you feigning from dehydration on their watch, believe me. If you're planning on spending most of your vacation time in Magic Kingdom, it might benefit you to stay super duper close to the park if you can. The deluxe resorts along the monorail loop, that's Contemporary, Polynesian, and Grand Floridian, are all within walking distance to Magic Kingdom's front gates. Disney's Wilderness Lodge might not be on the monorail loop, but it's still just a boat ride away from the park. The major downside to all of these resorts is their big price tags, which may be worth it to you for the proximity alone, depending on your vacation budget. Your cheapest option that'll still keep you close to Magic Kingdom is actually Disney's Fort Wilderness cabins and campgrounds. While the cabins are about to undergo some major DVC renovations, you can choose to camp with your own tents or campers on the campsites for only around $70 a night. Not only will this save you a whole lot of money if you're up for becoming one with the great outdoors, but you'll also be able to take a boat up to Magic Kingdom from these resort grounds too. And even if you decide you don't want to invest a whole lot of money into a stay at one of the monorail resorts, that doesn't mean you can't still take advantage of their proximity to Magic Kingdom. If the parks are just getting way too busy for your liking around lunch or dinner time, you can always hop on the monorail and hit up one of the restaurants inside those nearby resorts instead. For table service locations, which you will probably still need an advanced dining reservation for, some of our favorite monorail options include Ohana at Polynesian Village Resort, Steakhouse 71 at Contemporary, that one's pretty easy to get a reservation for, it's affordable and it's great. And Grand Floridian Cafe at the Grand Floridian Resort, same on that one. For a cheaper, faster meal, you can order quick service from Captain Cook's at Polynesian Village Resort, Contempo Cafe at Contemporary, and Gasparilla Island Grill at the Grand Floridian. Please do me a favor and get the mac and cheese because it is so, so good. If you're looking to get a Disney makeover and you're between the ages of 3 and 12, then Magic Kingdom can hook you up. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is a special salon where kids can transform into a princess, a prince, or even one of the characters from Encanto with Disney's new Encanto-inspired makeover package. The Fairy Godmother's apprentices, aka cast members, will pamper kids with a variety of beauty services, including hair and makeup, costumes, and plenty of magic. The non-magical part about this whole experience is the price. These packages typically range between $100 and $200, so make sure to talk this over with your kid first before surprising them with a Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique makeover, just so you're absolutely certain they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it $100 plus worth. All right, so Frontierland hasn't been looking like itself lately. It's got a good reason, but you should brace yourself. At the beginning of the year, Splash Mountain closed after its 30-year run and is currently being reimagined into a new Princess and the Frog-inspired ride called Tiana's Bayou Adventure. While the log flume track will remain the same, the ride itself will be completely transformed into a Mardi Gras jubilee with new and familiar faces alike. But because this overhaul is so extensive, Tiana's won't be ready to greet guests until late 2024. In the meantime, you'll still be able to experience other parts of Frontierland like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Country Bear Jamboree, and Tom Sawyer Island. With so much going on in Frontierland near the upcoming Tiana's Bayou Adventure attraction, it can be hard to navigate all the construction to see exactly what is still open and what's closed. But I tell you what, there is a set of restrooms in Frontierland that seems to have been forgotten about since all the new construction came to the area, and that can definitely play into your favor. Since the closure of Splash Mountain, the whole back queue area has been a mess, but those bathrooms are still open and have remained very clean, freshly scented, and well-kept for the last few months. And best of all, they're often deserted, meaning you can potty in peace. If you or someone you're traveling with has a disability, then the Disability Access Service Program is in place to help make your waits for rides easier. Instead of having to wait in the regular queue, you can go up to a cast member stationed at the ride, just like you would for Rider Switch, and request a return time. This service was updated back in 2021 after Disney Genie was released. Instead of having to wait until you arrive at the parks to set up your disability services, you'll now be able to video chat with a cast member 30 days in advance and select two attractions per day that you want to prioritize. 
prioritize. But you must make those selections at least two days in advance, so don't forget about them. You'll also be able to self-select rides the day of and get one hour return times right in the app rather than having to stop by each ride or kiosk. All right, next on our list of how to make Magic Kingdom better, check Shop Disney online first. Okay, you're gonna wanna make sure that that Magic Kingdom souvenir you're dying to buy at the parks isn't already being sold online where you could go home and get it anytime you want. If you buy an item from Shop Disney, you might even run across an online deal that Disney tends to drop on its virtual customers every now and then, so you could save money buying that must-grab item online rather than carry it around all day in the parks with you in person. For some more unique Magic Kingdom souvenirs that you won't find online, check out the following gift locations. Tomorrowland Launch Depot for the Build Your Own Tron action figure experience, Ye Old Christmas Shop for personalized ornaments and ears, the Portrait and Character Cart in Liberty Square for an affordable silhouette, and the Parasol Cart also in Liberty Square for hand-painted parasols. All right, parents and caretakers, this might be my most important Magic Kingdom tip for you. Magic Kingdom's Baby Care Center offers a quiet, peaceful, private, and free respite for parents to get in a quick diaper change or nurse or pick up any baby necessities you might have run out of. You can find Magic Kingdom's Baby Care Center right off Main Street USA between Crystal Palace and Casey's Corner. So you might want to consider requesting a specific ride seat on some of these rides because not all seats are created equal when it comes to those Disney World attractions. For instance, riding in the very back seat of Big Thunder Mountain gives you the wildest ride of all the wildest rides in the wilderness. Yep, that gravity really comes into play and the back seat feels the fastest. Now, if you're wanting a specific seat for a specific ride, make sure to ask the cast member about it when you're up toward the front of the attraction and about to board. Now, big old disclaimer here, y'all. Sometimes accommodations cannot be made, especially if Magic Kingdom is absolutely packed that day and cast members are just trying to fill in any and all available gaps that they can. So if a cast member says they're not taking requests at that time, don't take it personally. They're not trying to be me and they're just doing their job. Either way, it doesn't hurt to ask just in case. And if you're in Magic Kingdom on one of those busy days, it's definitely gonna behoove you to find out ride wait times in advance. Yes, I just said behoove in this video. Now, you may already know that you can find wait times for park attractions posted at the entrance to the ride itself or on the My Disney Experience app. But did you know you can also use the app to predict wait times for the rest of the day? Just use the Ride and Attractions tip board within My Disney Experience. You can search for a specific ride and tap on it to learn about its forecasted waits. And while forecasted waits aren't always 100% correct, just like forecasted forecasted weather, these graphs can still let you know when, on average, a ride's wait times typically do dip during the day. And you are definitely going to want to avoid stroller stress in the Magic Kingdom. Now, it's pretty easy to find a designated spot to park your stroller so your whole family can enjoy riding It's a Small World or whatever ride you choose together. Want to know what's not as easy? Finding your stroller after the ride. Not only do lots of strollers look exactly alike, but occasionally cast members may need to move strollers to nearby locations in order to accommodate operational needs in the parks. So our advice? Decorate your stroller with an easy to identify object. Doesn't need to be fancy. A brightly colored cloth tied on the handle can do the trick or some bit of shiny flair or a sign. Just something you can be on the lookout for that will catch your eye quickly during that occasional stroller search. Now, you know that we want you to have the best food in Magic Kingdom, right? So if you need a super thorough guide that will provide you with all the latest dining tips, all those tricks and recommendations in Magic Kingdom, we know a pretty awesome team that can hook you up. Just head on over to our dfbstore.com and order the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining in 2023. In this three-part guide, we provide you with full reviews of every single restaurant in Disney World, as well as provide you with updated dining info to make your Magic Kingdom day and your whole Disney World vacation much easier. Don't forget to type in code YouTube to save money on your guidebook purchase. And of course, all of your purchases go to support what we do here at DFB, making sure you have the best information you can to head to Disney World. So heads up that uh, if you're going to Magic Kingdom later this year, you may be celebrating the holidays way earlier than you expected. Magic Kingdom throws two holiday after hours parties each year. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. The Halloween party costs between $109 and $199 per adult, while the Christmas party is going to set you back $159 to $199. Note, these prices are separate from a regular day Magic Kingdom ticket. So how can you make sure you're paying for the cheaper end of that range instead of the most expensive? 
expensive one? By planning your holiday celebrations real early. The cheapest tickets for Not So Scary are listed for August 15th, 18th, 22nd, 25th, and 29th. Right, two months before we actually even hit Halloween. Meanwhile, the cheapest dates you're gonna find for Very Merry are November 13th, 14th, and 16th. Very, very pre-Thanksgiving on that one. But if you book your party tickets closer to the actual holidays, then you'll be paying top dollar for them. And in the case of Not So Scary, that's literally a $90 difference. So if you wanna save money and still experience these ghoulish and wintry events, then you're gonna need to get into the spirit of the season real quick. <laughs> Okay, here's a weirdly specific one for you, but I promise it's gonna help. If you take an umbrella or an external charger with you to Disney World, make sure to take it out of your backpack ahead of time before walking through the park's security check. This isn't major or anything, but it's kind of a nuisance if someone or multiple people in your group have to be pulled aside for a more thorough bag check since the umbrellas will trigger that security system. And like I said, same goes for those large phone chargers. Take those out of your backpack and carry those through security too. That way, when the security check is triggered, the security cast member will see what specifically caused it to set off. Just another time saver tip. So if you're about to go to Magic Kingdom for the first time, or if you're just in need of a refresher before your visit, this point is for you. Magic Kingdom has a lot packed into the park. We're talking over 40 attractions across six different lands. So studying up on the digital map on the My Disney Experience app ahead of your trip is gonna save you a whole lot of time when it comes to navigating your way around. Plus, it's really fun. After all, you've got so much to do, so little time to do it all, and you don't wanna waste a second of that time trying to find bus stops or restrooms or your must-do attractions. Even if you don't memorize every square foot of the park ahead of time, you don't have to, as long as you got the gist of it all. Magic Kingdom also provides guests with free physical park maps near the entrance if you'd prefer looking at one of those instead. And if you're still having trouble finding a certain location while you're at the parks, definitely ask cast members. They're more than happy to help you. So let's talk photo pass real quick. You're gonna find photo pass cast members all over Magic Kingdom with cameras out and ready to commemorate your trip. There are a few ways you can receive these pictures, but the main option Disney tries to sell you on is Memory Maker, which will give you all of the digital copies of your photos from your entire trip. You can either pay for Memory Maker ahead of time with that advanced price of $169 for the whole trip, or you can pay to purchase the entire trip's worth of pictures during or after your vacation for $199. Otherwise, you can purchase photos individually for a lot cheaper, like $30 per photo. Or you can also ask a cast member to snap a photo with your camera or phone too, for free. These just won't give you those cool magic shots with the zoom lenses or Photoshop Disney characters, but if you're just looking to get a quick pic of your family in front of Cinderella Castle, then the free route is always an option you can turn to. So we talked about lockers a little earlier at Tron, but if you don't want to carry your backpack with you all day long, or if you bought something from the gift shop you'd rather not lug all the way back to your hotel room just yet, then you might want to consider renting one of the Magic Kingdom's lockers, which are at the front of the park. Storage lockers at Magic Kingdom come in three sizes, small, large, and jumbo, and they range in price between $10 and $15. Just keep in mind that lockers don't transfer between parks, so if you plan on park hopping, you will have to pay for another locker at the next park if you want to store your stuff again. And don't forget to ask for those allergy binders. Dining around Magic Kingdom's fast food restaurants shouldn't make you nervous. So if you have a specific food allergy, don't hesitate to ask cast members at the quick service counter if you can look over their allergy binder. Allergy binders provide an organized list of all the specific ingredients you can find in each of the restaurant's items. However, that's not all you need to do to prepare to dine around Magic Kingdom. Before your trip, check out the online menus for the quick service locations and table service restaurants because many of the allergy-friendly menu items are provided there so you can plan what you're going to order ahead of time. Although Disney does its best to accommodate for these different needs, just know that these meals are not prepared in allergy-friendly kitchens, just in a separate part of the same kitchen. So if you're hypersensitive to a certain type of food, you might want to avoid restaurants that specialize in it. For example, you may want to avoid Columbia Harbor House if you have a major shellfish allergy. 
All right, so many Magic Kingdom tips, and yet the video is already over. How can this be? Well, to keep the Magic Kingdom advice coming, keep checking back with the DFB squad on our YouTube page as well as our website and social media pages. And don't forget to head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash MKChecklist for that free PDF, which will help you keep track of your must-dos while you're taking on the best day ever in Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.